it's visible. Yep, it's all good, Brendan. Okay, so you can see my screen. Amazing. This is the GitHub repo. And this gives you some basic instructions in the README, but the main tutorial content inside the docs folder. So if you click on docs and then you can go through these in sequence, there's an intro, which you have to do. And then after that, you can choose to do either via Hedera SDK JS or hard hat, or you can do both. And then you can complete with the outro. So that's the sequence that we'll be going through. And we'll be starting off with this one. So for example, the first thing I'll be going through is this. Now, before we start, just so you know what we will do and what we won't do is for prerequisites, th this tutorial requires you to know JavaScript and also some basics about the Hedera network. And I believe in a previous workshop that I'm given by one of my colleagues, she talked about Hedera network as a whole. So hopefully you've covered that as well. If not, watch the replay. In terms of system prerequisites, you'll need Git, you'll need Node.js. Actually, these two are not really required, they're optional. And then finally, you'll need a POSIX compliant shell and an internet connection. All right, and moving on, the other thing that I've asked uh, you to do prior to this workshop is to do the configuration steps, so step B1 uh, through 5. But um, I'll just go through them briefly as a sort of recap. Let's start off with what smart contracts are. So I've written about this in the tutorial, but just very briefly, it is a program that executes on the network. In the context of a blockchain or a DLT, that means that all of the nodes who are you know, achieving decentralized consensus on transactions, they also need to achieve decentralized consensus on how the smart contract changes over time. So each transaction that you send it to say invoke a function on a smart contract on this program, it needs to be agreed upon by the network as a whole, and only then will that function call succeed. So that's, that's one of the key differences between a smart contract and and a sort of regular program. The other, the other key difference is that while its state is mutable, so the data that's stored on it can be updated, the code within it is immutable, meaning it cannot change. So that's something that you don't see in Web2, for example, because whoever owns a particular website or software, they can update the software. Whereas with, with smart contracts, the code that is deployed is the code forever and you can't change it. There are some workarounds for that, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. 